in today's episode of Homestead How. Last year, one of the best videos I've ever put together was called Learning from a Chainsaw Carving Master. Here's a quick clip of that on the screen. In that video, I was practicing my chainsaw carving skills and I was coming up short. I did some research and I found a workshop nearby run by Jeff Moore of Northwoods Carver. And later I found out that Jeff Moore is one of the best, most talented, in my opinion, chainsaw carving artists in the world. He invited me over to his workshop and showed me around at all of the amazing chainsaw carvings that he had in the works. Not only that, he had a huge variety of chainsaws and his knowledge on chainsaws and the latest technology, the battery saws that are out there, all of the different attachments and features was quite amazing. Because Jeff does workshops, he has a ton of chainsaws. Due to the pandemic that's going on, Jeff and I haven't been able to meet to do those classes yet, but we're going to do that soon and I'm really looking forward to it. But in the meantime, Jeff and I were talking and thought it sure would be fun to do a video together, a reaction video, watching some of the top chainsaw and tree felling fails on the internet. Jeff has seen some of these and I've watched them over the years and I've really learned a lot from watching some of these videos but I suspect I could learn more having Jeff here. Doing a video with my friend, kind of neighbor, uh, Mr. Jeff Moore, who is a chainsaw carving artist. Jeff, how's it going? Awesome. How have you been? Happy to be here, man. I've, I've been good. I've been working, having students coming in and got resident students now that come in every week. Um, and they just kind of have a place in, in the shop and stuff. So I've uh, been working with them and uh, doing my, I've been selling great big, more, a lot of more, a lot more lamination projects. So we've got a lot more coming up that's going to be really cool to look at eventually here. It's a slow process. That's awesome. I got to show a clip, Jeff. So in the beginning, when I went to Jeff's workshop, you were working on that big, huge bear, which I know yeah. in the meantime, you finished. I think yeah. you got pictures on your website of that, right? Yeah, I think there is. Um, I think there is a few. We'll interrupt this clip and I'm gonna show a clip because in the beginning, I'm gonna show sort of the before. That bear was just amazing. It was so cool to see it afterwards. That thing, come, yeah. so it all came together good for you? Do you have any? When I looked at that, Jeff, I'm like, man, this is like a kind of project that could take years, but obviously you're a professional, you do this all the time, so. It took years off of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was a full-size brown bear, hollow, totally laminated, you know? So there was like 175 pieces to make this thing. And then it had to be sculpted and, you know, detailed and and then painted and it, you know, it was a crazy, and then installed. So we had to carry it literally. I mean, this thing, I don't know how much it weighed, but we had to create a system for 12 guys to pick this thing up off the trailer and walk it all the way around this guy's house, way back down by Green Lake on this really steep terrain, go underneath the bushes and you know, up the hill and then put it in place. And then we had to lag bolt it down and uh, it was quite the quite the task. I can't imagine because when you showed me just the head, I thought that was it. I thought like, look, I'm sculpting this huge head. That the head was just gigantic. I thought that was There's the project. Shot. That's all yeah. anybody cares about. It, anyways. I mean, the, the rest of the bear, they're like, wow, it's a big bear. But then everyone focuses on the face, you know, the yeah. head, the then intensity. We go, the, we go in the other part of Jeff's shop, and he's like, no, here's the body, and it's just this huge stack of wood, like the size of a small car all of the chainsaws that Jeff has, it's crazy. <laughs> like, I've got to have more since you've been here. <laughs> really? You have to have the world yeah. record for having the most chainsaws. Like you go into like a chainsaw dealership and they don't have as many chainsaws as Jeff because he does the workshops there. So you've got the electric chainsaws, the gas chainsaws, you got them all for your students to use. Yep. Yes, the, uh, uh, the battery saws, I have a lot of those. I probably do have more than most dealers just because, you know, I gotta have them. I gotta have, and they all gotta be different setups. Yeah, cool stuff. So Jeff knows a lot more than I do, so it'll be interesting to kind of get both of our perspectives and, and learn some things from these videos. Plus, a lot of them are just 
pretty entertaining to watch. So, <laughs> so we're going to jump in and we're going to review some of these videos. See if you can pass through. So he's he's down here. Well, well first of all, I was looking for that line. And so what it is, here's your tree, and he's dropping it uphill. It's a dangerous place for anybody to be because there's your escape route has to happen instantaneously. Because if that tree's 75 feet tall and the top of that hill is 25 feet high and it's at a slight angle or whatever the angle is, when that thing comes, there's a whole lot of tree on the other side of that that's gonna lift that butt end up. You see what I'm saying? And it yep. can come right back down and it's gonna come up off that stump no matter what. Unless yeah. you have a super heavy hinge. And then that and in that case, you're gonna need a super heavy hinge and you're also gonna need something with, with some some booty on it pulling it. Right. Wow, that was a scary one too. I, I haven't run into that. I don't have many hills or anything, but now let's let's just take a look here. Let me just see what's going on. Okay, here we go. There's somebody in the truck or no? I, yeah, there is. I know it looks rednecky, but it's done all the time. Right. Where's the tension? Is there, is there nobody in the truck? No, it just moved a little bit. Actually, it looks like the tires are moving. Doesn't look like it. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, tires were. Oh slipping. no, it is. Okay. Uh, something similar oh, happened. Oh. You know, no matter how loud you scream, no, it just always seems to still happen. <laughs> Preloaded it, which would be, would have been okay, but maybe if they had a tractor, like you said, or maybe if they were on cement, this would have worked out. You know what would have been really awesome? Is if that guy, now if their truck was, like, come back to like where that pile of wood is, right there, somewhere in there, they would have had a better shot. So laziness on this is what kicked their butt. They they just went where the grass was, you know, where they didn't have a mess. So they cleaned up that mess, and dealt with it, or just threw it over and put the truck there to kind of go with the tree a little bit more. Right. Then again, that guy, we don't see that notch. We don't see that back cut. It might not be the guy in the truck's fault because if it's notched correctly, that truck should have walked away with it. If he left too much of a hinge or not enough, we, we don't know what he did. Right. If he left too much of a hinge, the thing's just going to start spinning. Once it starts spinning, it's all over but the crying. Is he like way too high? He's incredibly high. Um, and he is using a bar that is way too short for the job. You, it's a sketchy situation right here. I mean, um, Ideally, you want a bar that's going to reach all the way across, and and then some. So you have, uh, and then you have to have that back cut much lower. Right. This one was interesting too. He's cutting down like a palm tree here. Have you ever cut anything down like that? No. I don't know if there's much difference. I don't know if it's like a softer wood or what, but it seems no, the same I'm principles not, would apply. I'm not sure, but this this looks like a kind of hokey. A hokey deal. <laughs> yeah. um, I've been part of many of those over the years. You know, back in the day before I was, uh, before I was serious about you know doing the tree trimming and working for the tree service. So, right. yeah, I've, I've seen it done like this, and it's just sketchy. Yeah. All right, let's see what happens here. <laughs> Put his hands together to pray. What was that? Yeah, it looked like a little back. prayer. Did he, did he? All right, look at the tension on the rope. Um, I don't know what it looks like on the other side of this building or if there's a driveway or whatever, but you need something that is going to be reefing on that rope, like preloading the tree to fall in the direction, the desired direction. Right. And you really need to preload that rope because it, it's going to want to stretch and stretch. You know, a lot of those will. They'll start, you know, they'll really stretch and that's going to give the preload to help that log determine where it's going to, or the tree where it's going to fall. And if you look at this thing, 
it's literally like swaying in the breeze. There's no tension on it at all. And and uh, this guy is taking his sweet time. So this, uh, this, this I don't see going well for anybody. There's no tension on the rope, so what difference does it make? Yeah, it's like the, that rope is just useless, it looks like. Yeah. And it, it definitely looks, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a rookie, as I mentioned before, but that's mm -hmm. the one thing is like spending more time trying to study it and figure it out. And to me, it definitely looks like it's leaning towards that house. Looks like the- well, one, thing, one thing they do have going for them that, that looks like a pretty decent notch, but the, the, and the height of the rope was good. So they would have had a lot of control over it had they done it correctly. But we're, I'm sure we're about to be treated to something <laughs> that I never want to see in real life. Yeah, let's see what happens here. Oh, so he stops and he's he's gonna pull on the rope. Here it comes. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's gonna oh. work. Oh, that is crazy. Oh, brother. Yeah, so he was a he, I, one man show, I guess. Someone's holding the camera and he went to pull on the rope. Okay, okay. Let's, 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 uh, Uh, so, all right. So there's a problem at this point in this at this freeze frame where you have it now. It's starting to kind of come over, but before that, it was relatively straight up in the air. And this guy's like, I don't know if this was his property. You know, a lot of homeowners kind of tend to do stupid stuff like this. They just got it. Oh, I got a big chainsaw. It's <laughs> you know, I got a, I got a. What kind of chainsaw do you have? Oh, I got a 16 inch. Right. Like, okay, what? You know, they, 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 you know, so that's the misconception that, you know, just because it's a 16 or a 20, it's, that's not the kind of chainsaw it is. That's how long the bar is. So you want to have a bar that, a uh, chainsaw that's adequate enough to spin that chain at a, you know, an adequate speed to cut efficiently. Um, you can put a long bar on a weak saw, but it's not going to be as effective. This guy had a short bar on a medium to small saw. And he, in order for him to be able to pull that by himself, he at least had that knowledge that the, that that hinge would had to be super duper thin in order in order for him to get it to go. So as soon as there was even the tiny littlest bit of torque on it, it was just going to pop. And the weight of the tree it looks to be more on that side. So that's exactly where it went. He did not leave any hinge wood because he's alone. Apparently, there's two guys watching him though in the background. Right. You know, you're gonna see. You're gonna just wave them over and said, "Hey, <laughs> pull on this roof. Yeah, let's pull." You know, <laughs> and apparently, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So some that's of what these, happened. some of these videos, Jeff, I watch and um, I get the feeling, kind of like you said, maybe he's the homeowner or something, or I, I don't know. I've heard family members say that before, where they're like. Hey, this tree is leaning. I'm worried it's gonna fall. Can you cut it down? And then it ends up falling on the house where it's like, oh, yeah. maybe you should have just left it there. Maybe it wasn't that bad of a of an issue. Or, or if it's that horrible, sketchy. Though? You're yeah. the neighbor that has a chainsaw and like say you're this neighbor with the chainsaw and or this neighbor with the chainsaw and you're gonna or whatever, and you're gonna cut the cut the guy's tree down and then it falls. Either way, it's bad if it hits either house, but it's like, it's, it's, I see it done all the time. Right. All the time. And it's, and it's sad. I've cut down so many trees on my property, but they're always out in the woods without, I haven't had anything near the house. Something like this, I would probably call a professional. And even after doing it for a couple of years, I'd be way too worried. Especially yeah. after watching these videos. <laughs> this next one, I got to pause real quick because this one I thought, Kind of funny. One of the things I've done quite a few um, tree felling videos on my channel, and I always get like, "Hey, you need better safety gear," which is all really good advice, and I've since upgraded. But the first year I was here, I was not very safe. But this guy with the shorts on, man, that's just crazy. And then you got the two guys too, which doesn't seem like a good idea. But well, hey, man, you gotta have one guy to push. Yeah, he's Otherwise, there pushing. He's gonna hit that it's gonna hit the plastic kitty swing if you don't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, his job is to hold the tree up in case it goes the wrong way. Oh, no, stop, stop. 
It looked like he was doing a pretty, uh, like a notch, maybe too deep, and the other guy was like, no, stop, stop. Maybe he's. I think he was trying to tell him to get out of the way, whoever was. It's almost like he was telling the guy to stop, like like his uh, notch there, he was going a little too deep or something. I don't, I don't know, but I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I'm, ha I'm pretty confident that that little kid's swing is not going to get damaged during the making of this uh, video. Right. Well, let's see what happens. Well, Oh, he's I'm like, I'm going to take over now. <laughs> I'm praying for the kid. He's like, you you hold the tree now. I'm going to take over. Yeah, he's not holding turn. it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hurt that bar. Get out of the way, buddy. Yeah, hold it. Oh. Hold it. You see see how he cut through that? They never took the – they never – that is the perfect pose for what I just saw. Right. Oh, give me a break. So he Except started the notch. He started the notch. And then the guy said, no, stop the notch. And then he just cut through it. And there was no notch. So it they never popped the notch. And not only that, there was not enough meat left for it to do anything. And then when he stabbed it through the backside, he went right through where the notch was, removing any chance that right. it was going to go where it was supposed to go. Wow. Well, I, you know, I hope no one was like sunbathing or... You know, I hope they weren't like having a nice cookout, you know, and had expensive steaks on the grill. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry, yeah. neighbors. Right. Yeah. So uh, the second guy was like, you were supposed to hold the tree. What were you doing? You take, you took the saw. No one's holding it anymore. Of course it's going to fall through the bush. Yeah. They saved the swing. Saved Any, the swing. I was right. <laughs> If that was the goal, they definitely achieved it. No one got hurt, no safety gear on. Hopefully, like you said, nothing got crushed on the other well, side. Well, nobody on this side of the hedge. Right. Well, whoever is maintaining their hedges is a professional, that's for sure. Nice looking and hedges, I, for sure. Well, they were. Is, they're going <laughs> to be upset. They were nice looking hedges. Yes, they were, and the swings are all intact. In terms of what to learn from this, I know as a rookie, a couple times I've done that where I made the um, notch too deep. And this one, it's like you said, it looks like he almost went all the way through with the notch way too deep to the point where he almost just cut the tree in half making his notch. Well, let me tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add it. They, they obviously realized that the tree was leaning that direction. And they were trying to um, make it right by putting the notch kind of on this side of that beautifully trimmed hedges between the beautifully trimmed hedges and the child swing so they were trying to like put it right between those two and i seen how that was going to go but like you said they went way too deep and left like a like a fraction of what they needed and then they pierced that fraction and the tree just had no choice but to tip over you know it just went the way gravity wanted it to go I would not recommend that procedure. So this is this is, and I I, I wouldn't recommend do it in your shorts. <laughs> yeah. um, so that kind of sets up the video right there when you see a guy in shorts and his dad or his buddy leaning on a tree. You kind of can see where that one's gonna go. Right. But then again, I've seen guys that look like total pros with all the Husqvarna gear or steel gear with the helmets and the you know, Kevlar, you know, and the chaps, and they look like, you know, they're ready to join a competition or something. Well, I don't like this. I don't like mm. this. Mm. I don't like it. Oh, nope, 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 nope. See, that, nope. One's, that one scares the hell out of me watching that one, because I could see, I, I haven't cut a tree down that big before, but... I don't see a guy in shorts, like, with the father holding up the tree. This guy looks like he knows what he's doing, but, man, it sure went to hell quick. Um, there's a problem with knowing what you're doing sometimes. I've fallen victim to it myself, where this guy's clearly a logger. He's a professional. There's, there's nothing, you know, everything was marked. He had a couple things that were not working in his advantage. Um, the one thing is, is see how he's down in an angle like that. Where is his path to get out? He doesn't have one. So when you become overconfident, especially as a logger, you, you know, you, you're just so used to 
cutting these things down and they just kind of tip over for you or sometimes they take a little pulling but as you can see there's a big cavity there and from my experience and i would think this guy would know better um that normally a cavity like that means whiskey barrel inside full of punk and when you got a whiskey barrel full of punk it's who knows what's happened to that tree over the years it's totally decayed. There's no structural fiber left, uh, to, you know, and so it's just kind of like a shell. It's literally like a whiskey barrel. And so we have all these, look, when you go to cut down a tree, make sure you look at the very base. Uh, sometimes you'll either see, you can look up at the, up the tree a little bit. And if you see like pocket, like where there was a, a limb that got broken off and now there's a deep pocket in there, there's a good chance that that, will uh, that's going to affect the, the structural integrity it could be hitting it uh, could have gotten hit by lightning so always look for those big seams going up um there's all different kinds of things to look out for um and this is a dead giveaway in my opinion you know because i've done this for a while <laughs> and this this fella here is professional as he's coming across there is no escape path there's no escape route that makes sense to me. There's no getaway plan. You know what I mean? Like there's probably just threads or little, you know, pathways of uh, decent wood or, you know, somewhat, some that have some integrity. And he's just cutting right through those things. And this thing's a big, heavy beast. See, so it's starting to move. So that tells me there's preload somehow. And now look, right alongside that. See how that thing is just like, he's got nowhere to go. Look at what's left. It's between where his saw is right now and that up part. He didn't get a chance to finish his cut. I like your advice too. Uh, always have an escape route. I didn't notice yeah. that earlier. And you're right, he's almost, there's a hill there or something, but he's at ground level totally. You can't even see his legs. Yeah, and, and they never really show the length of the bar on the saw, do they? I don't think so. I think he just oh, banned, abandoned oh, ship. Oh, when you are when you come into some really crappy wood, it blows out like red dust. So right there, you need to reassess. And if he was running into that red dust when he was notching it, then this is this this all could have been avoided. I haven't run into this too much, but I have hit rot a couple times in the tree and I Usually pretty quickly, I was able to notice, like, hey, the, the saw isn't requiring as much power anymore. The sound of the saw is changing a little bit as it's going through that rod. It's just going through like nothing. It's going through something yeah. really hard, and then it's just like it's going through the air, basically. Okay, hold up. I'm sensing impending doom. <laughs> um, okay, see this? See this? I don't know if this is a power line or or what, but this thing is under intense pressure with the weight of this tree. And when I, I you know, I didn't know if that was a rope or if that was like some kind of thing in the road. And then I saw that it kind of goes underneath the tree, kind of curls up and shoots off towards the portly gentleman in the on the left of the screen up towards like his mouth area so that is either a rope or a, a high or like a, a wire of some kind that was taken down so anyway this thing is under intense pressure yeah so as this guy's undercutting he's making the right call by undercutting but he's making the wrong call right there by cutting on something that's suspended that clearly is under pressure so I uh -huh. I didn't I didn't notice until you said that I saw the rope, but I didn't notice it's just daylight underneath the whole bottom of yes. the tree. It's completely in yes. here. That's a thick trunk. And it and you'll see it. I, I just noticed that it was bobbing like kind of like like it was levitating, and I'm like, man, is that a rope or a wire? Or is that like a power line? What is that? And right. I'm thinking, oh man, this thing is loaded. You see what happens? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it fell a little. Okay, there it goes. So it's sagging. Now he's gonna. Now he's gonna step aside, and then he's gonna. Oh man. 
He's got a oh, couple no. people no, telling no. him what to do and what not to do. Heard in general. So, okay, heads up, buddy. Here comes the boss. Okay. Oh! Wow. Wow. Now you know what, it, what it's like to get hit by Mike Tyson. That is a running chainsaw in his hand. When it cleans his clock, he goes flying. Watch that saw. That could have ended up anywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got a couple people telling him, no, you're doing it wrong. Do it like this. I wonder what they're saying to him, because the one guy tells him, and then the other guy in blue comes up. Do you know how much pressure, whatever that thing is, I don't think it's a rope. I think it's some kind of wire. And it's being recorded pretty stout. Right. Because it just lifted that, God knows how many, how, how uh, heavy that thing is. Like nothing. Yeah, and look, it, it's gone now. It's completely off the screen. I guess uh, one oh. thing with this, if we can learn anything, is um, when I first started cutting trees down, that was one lesson that took me a while to figure out. Like you mentioned, figuring out where the tension is and do you cut underneath or do you cut on top? Obviously, this is a crazy scenario that most people aren't going to run into where there's a line pulling it up, but... I've run into that before many times. The first year I was using my saw, where I cut it from well, from the top, yeah. and I pinch the I pinch the bar, and it gets stuck in there. One of the things where this can happen, and that is when a tree is a, when you have a blowover, and the whole root system comes up. Okay, and so a lot of times the root system on the you know the the majority of the root system is just yanked out, and and there's a lot of pressure there because there, there's a, still a ton left from the ground coming up to that to that stump. And once that pressure is relieved, relieved um, that thing can pop back up. And I've seen that happen and um, it's pretty squirrely, but you see it happen one time, you know, you just start taking, taking the weight off and slowly work your way back and you'll see that thing slowly start to, you know, come up. And then at one, at one point or another, the ground, the branches that are smashed into the ground start to lift up and you can kind of get in there and it, you can use it to your advantage. Destroyed his ladder. <laughs> Man, I would not have the guts to go that high. <laughs> Just sit on Replay the Replay that. Please. So, oh, there's the dude. He's at the top. All right. He's... There's so many things. <laughs> Pretty high up, too. Ladder's destroyed. That was a homemade ladder, man. Yeah, that wasn't a very secure ladder, anyhow. I would not have the guts to pull that one off. I would not have the guts to climb the ladder. Right. Yeah, let's look at that ladder again. Okay, so I'm, a, I'm assuming this is a relatively short clip. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so I see this, I have seen this, not this particular clip, but I've seen people do this kind of thing where they just try to get to where they're going. Um, my, my thought here is a ladder that size would be very expensive. Which, which to me dictates the DIY approach. Right. Oh, she's good. Oh yeah, that'll get us up there. <laughs> That's 35 feet, whatever it is. So let's just build our own, man. We'll go, We'll make her out of good old Wisconsin white pine, eh? Yeah. A couple of two by fours. Yeah, we'll get her up there. Do they sell 38 foot two by fours? <laughs> I, I want to know how they did that. Right. How? Two 38 foot long two by fours. We're gonna mill them ourselves uh, off the it, wood that we cut off this tree. It broke there. Maybe they maybe they used eight footers and then they just spliced them together there every eight feet. I think we could do a total analysis on that ladder, <laughs> but it but needless to say, all right. Okay, so there's our spoon. All right, so stop her right there. All right, so. I don't see chaps. Do you? Are those chaps? 
I don't think so. Okay. Another thing is his legs are just kind of dangling there. He's in the crotch of the tree. Um, normally, what we were taught in the tree service uh, when, as climbers is the only time you, you know you use a ladder, and, and a lot of climbers don't even use them. Um, they'll, they'll just get them up to the first crotch or whatever. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, if there's a big long stretch. They'll just do that, you know, they'll use a Johnny ball, or, you know, and then they'll sling their climbing rope over and with, cinch their way up the tree to the first, wherever they shop. But the key is, if you're gonna use the ladder, that ladder comes off as soon as you're in the tree because you don't want that ladder anywhere near where you're working and you don't want to be ever working off a ladder in a tree, ever. I'm glad you said that because that was gonna be a question I've seen so many of these videos over the years, and it's almost every time with the ladder, it's like a magnet. The tree falls and it hits the ladder, it knocks them off the ladder, it crushes them. It's like, yeah, yep. I guess there's never a good reason to be on a ladder cutting a tree. No. If it, if it no, gets because, to that point, you need a professional. Yeah, so if, if, if so, so if that was me and I was climbing, I would, you know, you go up to the top uh, quarter or, or the top, uh, depending on how big the tree is and what you need to do with it, come they they tie in up there and then so that they can swing, they could just rappel down and walk literally walk out on this limb that he's cutting, and then they'd they'd have a separate rope that they'd just rope that piece down because you know, well unless it was there was nothing down there that could be destroyed, then they just rappel down, pick that limb out, and and then go back up, they could do whatever. Uh, absolutely get the ladder gone. I think it's a good lesson that anyone out there that's new or if you're ever in the position where you're like, hey, do I need a ladder or is this higher up? Second, think about it, it's a good cautionary tale. Think about it a little bit harder first. Or if you're in your garage uh, building your own DIY ladder, maybe it's time to back down a little bit and yeah. hand that yeah, one so over to you, the pros. If you need, if you need, if your ladder is twice as long as your garage, <laughs> you need to reevaluate right. what you're about to do. And, and frankly, this guy got pretty lucky because I've watched so many of these videos and it's almost all the other ladder ones, the person is getting injured. His ladder was destroyed, but it, he, he came away unscathed, luckily, but. Yeah, he, he could have made a pass through with his saw and caught a bum you know, tip or something, and that thing could have come right into his shin or, you know. Right. I'm so I happy I, I got my chainsaw chaps. I had all the other safety gear, and I was getting a lot of comments on my YouTube channel, get the chaps, get the chaps. And I was like, ah, I'll be careful, I'll need them, but I feel a lot safer with, especially when mm -hmm. you're using saw so much. Yeah, the, the someone left me a comment a while ago, and it was a really good one. They are like, the chainsaw chaps are kind of like, um, jack stands to a mechanic. It just takes a couple extra seconds to put them on, put yep. a jack stand under your jack. So many people will do that too. I hear that all the time on the news and stuff that where they've got some cheap Chinese jack or something and it fails yeah. and you have to crush them. It's like two seconds to put that jack stand under there. It's kind of the same thing with the chaps. It just takes a little bit of extra time to put those on. All right, should we see the next one here? Yep. Here we go. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Back, but you're gonna have to hit Menards again. <laughs> yeah, there goes the ladder. I oh, hope we got another I ladder. Hope his legs don't fall asleep waiting for his wife to get back from Menards. Right. Here's what another ladder. Here? This one's not homemade. No. Nice little ladder there, but let's see what happens here. Oh, that was a big ladder, tall ladder. Okay. So this dude. Okay, hang on. Yep. So he's cutting directly over his head. <laughs> directly. Like he has to know. And why is he on that side of the fence? Oh, right. Yeah. Is it, is it his? So, oh man, I hope that, you know, it's it, what it looks like is it could be uh, not so friendly neighbors. Right. Maybe, and they're like, they don't want him on their property type thing. And he's like, well, yeah, well, I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, I'm gonna put my ladder up. Your tree limb is over my fence. I'm gonna take care of it myself. 
You know what really works well in a situation like this? A pull saw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. You can even back the F-150 back there, stand on the bed with the pull saw and get her done. Gravity. It's right above he didn't, Like, how tall, how high is he? Is he, like, That's 10 a, feet up? It's it's a lot higher than it looks in this first shot. Let's play it again. We can yeah, see it. That looks like about a six-foot fence. So he gets whacked, and then the whole ladder comes down, and he... So that, that that's not much of a branch, man. Right. What did he catch it between his legs? <laughs> no. This one's a tough one. It goes real quick. Ouch! It's coming down. What? Oh, it looks it, like it cuts it something. Cut. That, he got something sticking that? out of his pocket. Is that his cell phone? <laughs> I think you're right. He's got something sticking out of his back pocket, and it caught it. That is like a nothing branch. It weighs maybe 45 pounds, 50, or maybe 60 pounds. And it gets hung up right dead smack in the middle, the perfect balancing weight momentarily on a Samsung or whatever the heck that thing is. <laughs> if not for this thing in the pocket, he probably would have been all right. Because it all what? goes to hell after that. It just pulls him, pulls the ladder to the side. Then the ladder pivots on the fence. So, so then homeboy the falls right. off goes on the other side of the fence in the other guy's yard anyway and hopefully he doesn't have like a pit bull back there to guard who's guarding his potted plants the guys the, the the neighbors probably looking out the back window like see i told you another argument for not using a ladder there you go not here's, not working off a ladder there's here's another, another one here's another ladder example if if you if you need this many examples of why that you sh why you shouldn't work off a ladder then then here they are now this one too though like you said jeff for the last guy what is he thinking the last guy's cutting the branch above his head now this guy's cutting the tree that's supported by the ladder above him so what's going to happen to the ladder when he cuts through the tree what i don't know <laughs> i can't see it ending well. i don't think he knows either right he's like well let's just see what happens get a shorter ladder he should he should have got some two by fours and built a shorter ladder like the other guy. I I am not into ripping on people, but honestly, when I look at this, I'm like concerned for humanity. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, he's got a rope. Oh, uh, he's got the rope. But notice the tension. Right. The, and he's the ripped. absence of it. Oh, he was high up too. See what this guy's doing. Yeah, I don't know if he's sharpening or what. Man, that tree is close to the porch, though. They almost like they build the porch around the tree. Dude, I honestly thought that was a po uh, a, a fence, like a, or a post for the porch. And right. I thought he was over there. It looks like he's like working on a saw or something. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, yeah, you're not gonna stop it. Okay. Uh, Watch out. Yeah. Well, he's got his orange shirt on and he's got his orange helmet on. <laughs> right. And he's got his he's got his pants, his his khaki pants on and his work boots. And he in his defense, he did try to push the tree away from the porch. There's he he will have zero effect. <laughs> right. He has no he has less than he has like about a chance of a mouse pushing a semi. Right. That was like that, the earlier video. It's already the... in motion. It's already going that direction. Well, who knows how much damage is done, but the porch is still standing at least. Like I say, I don't like bashing people, but you know, we 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 have a tendency to stand there and look at disaster and like in disbelief, thinking that somehow, all right, let her let her go. Watch out. Where's his path of, of retreat? Yeah. He totally compromised it when he tried to stop the tree. So that that is that is a sign of absolute um, inexperience right there. He's trying to push the thing away, try to like use 
as it falls, he's trying to push that butt end away so that the thing will roll off. I got and it. This tree has other ideas. And now that thing could have clobbered him, man. Right, it could have came right down on him because he's right over the trunk now. He's he was he was putting such effort into pushing that tree that he forgot where he was and he tripped over the stump itself. Technically, he could have been laying, you know, he could have fallen and that tree could have came right down on him or close to it. Right. So I mean, if if you got enough savvy to get a to get a helmet and an orange shirt to match it, <laughs> you might want to pick up the uh, the the extra rope and maybe a. a Offer your neighbor a six pack if he pulls on the rope for you. I've, I've found myself in many squirrely a situation. Yeah, I laugh at some of these too, and I, I should make a point too. I'm not laughing at these people. I've made so no. many mistakes on my channel. I show them all too. I'm like, hey, other people can learn from them. So a lot of times when I'm laughing at these, it's usually like I could see myself in that scenario at some time as well. So it's kind of funny from that perspective. But yeah, I, I see reaction videos and they're funny but they're usually at other people's expenses. Here we're trying to do a little learning. Right. Learning time. So yeah. I would say, if, you know, great. If it, if it was me I, and I had to compliment this fella, I would say it looked as though the saw was relatively sharp. Kudos. You have your safety gear on somewhat. Helmet. Kudos. Yeah, that's about yeah. it, I think. Next. <laughs> yeah. And thank right. you for giving us something to learn by. Yeah, because like I said, I joke about these two, but a lot of these end up sticking in my head. And then when I go out and cut a tree, I'm thinking, oh, remember that one where the guy with the homemade ladder or where he fell it the wrong way or it was rotten? Those things stick in my head. So first, one of the first things we talked about, I think it was the second video. The most, one of the most important things about taking one of these down. Was it the having the escape route? Yeah, where's their escape route, bud? Yeah, yeah, look at all that. Yeah, you're just gonna trip. You're gonna trip and fall for sure. I think, I think escape route, it look, I don't know if this is just the trunk though. It looks like the majority of the tree is on the ground, but man, when you. Yeah, they're up to their knees in brush. Can't even there's see. No, there's nowhere they're gonna go. <laughs> See what happens. So their their principles are sound. Oh my god, that's a big. Oh. Oops. Oops. There goes wow. the Christmas decorations. Jeez. Why did I say that? That was like the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> Christmas decoration. See, in this one, I would think, hey, if they're putting wedges on this side, they want it to fall on the opposite side. The opposite side, to me, from this angle, looks like it's this house. Did it? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it rolled. It looks like. Where were they trying to put this thing? Did they not think it was going to hit? Seriously, look how tall it is. Right. It's almost like they did that on purpose, man. Like someone put a beer can on the top of that roof and said, I bet you can't hit it. And they're like, oh yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is another good lesson. If you've got stumps around the tree that you're felling, and what happens is that tree, like say if it's on a downhill thing, always try to cut those stumps low all the way around wherever the tree is that you're working on. You don't want to leave a bunch of stumps. Because what happens is that tree will fall, like here's your stump right here. That tree falls that direction. What happens? It kicks this this thing up. It does like a woof. It comes right. back at you, or it'll just flail wherever. Um, so that's something. Or, or it could come straight up and then hit that thing on the side and then shoot it over this way or shoot it over that way. In which you definitely want an escape route. Right. It never showed what happened on the other end of that. Yeah. Not that it matters. That's actually some really good advice because I think I was telling you when I visited, um, I keep cutting, I get yelled at on my YouTube videos because I keep cutting the stumps high because I try to do some chainsaw bears with them. So every video I leave a little explanation, but I, I'm, I've cutting down quite a few in one area now and I could run into what you just described. I got to be more careful with that. Absolutely. And mine are usually up higher too. I mean, I got them up significantly higher. so. 
<laughs> somebody also, somebody got up to the top of that tree. All oh, right. But look at as it's coming down. There is there is no green stuff left on that thing, is there? No, it's all limbed up. All, they limbed it all the way to the top. This didn't have to happen. Look at this. They got the fence taken down. They came in there with a bucket truck. There's no other reason to have all that fence removed unless there's a bucket truck coming in. So now they've destroyed a house because they didn't take the time to clear the brush out of the way so they could top the thing correctly. I mean, that way they could have notched it and it, it would never have fallen on anything. You right. know, they could have notched that thing to, to 20 feet, just dropped a bunch of nice um, chunks down. Yep. Oh, this last one, I think this is one of the last ones here. This one really isn't, I just thought this one was cool. You mentioned earlier to look out on trees if they got hit by lightning. This blows the park. <laughs> Look at the look at the roof line too. I didn't notice that before. What? Pretty, pretty sure that's not supposed to be leaning down like that. You know, I've seen them get houses get destroyed, but I never seen one like break a house, like break it. It just go. Man, look at that lightning! It's just crazy. It just look at how it, it went up and down the tree. Look, it just debarked the whole tree. Look at how it. Like the interference, the power of that made the film like do a weird thing. You see that? Go back. It's like, it's not from us. It's from, oh yeah. Look at that. Boop. It wrecks the camera for a minute. Yeah. Oh, look at the flames coming out of underneath the gutter. Wow. Or, look at that right there. That's oh, crazy. that's probably what attracted it in the first place, man. Is Isn't that metal? place even grounded? That's a log home, man. Wow. What a whoever got this on camera, though, man. Good job. Didn't drop the camera either. <laughs> I bet he, I bet he had that was. I bet he had a little something something in his shorts after that. Right, a little cleanup after that. Clean up. Right there, you think it's done too, and then the big chunk comes out. Oh. Just took the whole top of the tree out. I mean, no bad. <laughs> awesome. This is the last one we have, and again, I don't think this guy gets hurt, so we can laugh at it. And I laugh at this one because I could see this happening to me or me doing this one. Let's just watch it. I, I love this video. I don't know if I've seen this one. Look out! Wee! <laughs> Superman. So I think he's okay, but what the, the strength of this guy to not let go of the rope, too. No, the problem is he can't let go of the rope. It's wrapped around his hand. You would think he has plenty of ass to pull this thing, but not enough. I'm Wow. Sorry, I had <laughs> That could have been me, but, you know, so like when when we, um, I'll stand up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but when, when you, when we would pull, you know, sometimes it just takes a guy on the ground. If you know what you're doing, you got a good ground man or a couple good ground men, you can get a couple guys to pull on something and make it go wherever you want, as long as the branch isn't too big and you're not being in a hurry. You know, so what we would do is we'd get the rope to come down and then we put it like under our butt and then we'd fold the rope and grab it and put it right like right there so that if that tree got a little out of hand, like I was the anchor man. So if that tree got a little out of hand, you're not your arms aren't wrapped around it. You don't want to wrap the thing around your arm because another thing that could happen is like if you got the tail under the rope and you do like two twists or something, your arms are all sweaty. And I've had it where I had just, it just a little bit over my arm and the thing started going sideways and somebody would grab, somebody grabbed the other end of the rope, not thinking. And 
of course, the torch torque pulling that way and some guy pulling this way and your arm's in the middle. It's like the old fashioned Indian rug burn, oh. but it, it's like not good. And the other thing is, is, you know, the rug, it yanks and you, you got sweaty hands or whatever. You don't want to be holding on to that thing. You don't want to be wrapped ever. One more time. That one's just crazy. Good cameraman, though. Thank God he got that on camera. Could you imagine just talking about it? Yeah, I was holding the rope. It pulled me up in the tree. But to see that on video, that's crazy. Oh, like, he's horizontal. He's parallel to the ground. He's like Superman right there. Like Spidey. <laughs> We need music in the background. I, I believe I could fly. I believe I could fly. <laughs> he is. Flying. Oh, man. Uh, we just watched a whole bunch of videos. Jeff, you got some really good advice. I'm just trying to think because it's Homestead How Learn With Us. What can we learn? There's a couple things I was thinking about or I wrote down that you mentioned. I think one of the big ones was always have an escape route. That's really important. <laughs> yes, we clearly. That for sure. Clearly. Um, Safety gear is important and kind of goes without saying, but although when I started, I didn't have all the safety gear and I do now, the chaps, the ear protection, the eye protection, that one guy that got hit in the face, like the face shield would have been helpful in that case. And then um, the ladders, don't use a ladder, <laughs> call a tree service. If you're thinking about yep. building your own ladder, then maybe it's time to call a tree service or back up. Reassess, reassess if it won't fit in your garage and you got to like do a ladder twice as long as your garage. I think that was it. Were there any other sort of safety or learning um, takeaways? Yeah, I think that even the most trained people can have incidences. We've seen a couple of the guys that looked like they were trained professionals, but they were lackadaisical in their preparation. Like they could have avoided, I mean, they had the equipment right there. You know, five more feet got off the top. Right. You know, that one, that big tall one that tipped over and smashed that house. They were all the way up top. They totally went all the way up. They skinned the whole thing out. There was nothing left. It was a nothing but a perfectly beautiful log going all the way up. And they just left it at like 70 feet. Right. Why not just start knocking her down to 50 or 40 or whatever? Because they did not have enough time. They didn't want to clean the area around. They didn't want a bunch of logs on top of the brush. And that's, you know, I know it because I've done it. You know, and uh, I don't claim to be like a pro anymore, but I used to do it for a while and I had to train other people to do it. So um, maybe I was a little backwards back then, but I still carry that same kind of common sense when I go, when anytime I touch a saw, you know, kind of no second nature, that what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, especially when now, especially now, like when I'm out in the woods cutting, if I'm ever in the woods, my wife and my kids are with me and they're, you know, they're adults. So their, their safety is paramount. So I'm even more paranoid now, you know, so I, you know, I very seldom have to cut wood in the woods. Um, so now thankfully it's just, I get to point a little tiny bar about this big, you know, and make stuff in my shop so that's right. that's dangerous as it gets for me yep cool good stuff this was a lot of fun jeff thank you so much for your time again i want to encourage people go check out the video jeff and i did together learning from a chainsaw carving artist i'll leave a link in the description below it's on our channel it's becoming a really popular video we had a lot of fun doing that one and be sure to check out jeff at northwoodscarver.com yeah, and as soon as this is over, this pandemic thing is over, you got to come back. Yeah, I can't wait. A lot of cool things happening in the shop, a lot of cool inventions. You know, we're working on some cool stuff, and uh, it'll be cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate the invite. I can't wait. I'll I'm take you up on that for sure. And come if you don't mind, I'm going to bring the camera with, too. Come take some lessons, man. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm getting worse over here. <laughs> <laughs> I have about well, a million... We have Zoom, dude. Right? Yeah, we could do a Zoom lesson. Bring we it out in the woods. Lesson. 
I've got about a million stumps that are about five feet high just waiting for me to practice on. Every time I cut them, Jen's like, what are you doing? Just cut it lower. I'm like, no, I could practice on that one later, but now I just got them everywhere. So, yeah, so check out Jeff's website too, northwoodscarver.com. You can see some of the awesome projects he's working on. He's got a lot of cool pictures.